All righty then. Howl number three. This All is right, it. man. It's a trilogy officially. Sweet, sweet. I've uh, I kind of slowed down this past month. I didn't see a lot, but what I did see was uh, was fairly significant. But why don't we start with what we both saw, which was Hereditary in IMAX. Yeah, that was awesome. I don't understand why it was only one night. Because like Blumhouse, obviously, they brought a bunch of movies back in the theater, but I don't think they remastered them. But to put a movie in IMAX, you got to redo a bunch of, I don't pretend to know how that works. But it's like, why was it only one night? Yeah, I don't know. I just saw it because a friend of mine actually sent me a link and I was like, oh, shit. Okay. So I put it on the calendar, like maybe a few days before Mm -hmm. and uh, we went and saw it. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. How was your experience? It was great. Yeah, it was so good. So, was it as scary as the first time you saw it? No, but every time I you watch had some that, weird shit happen. <laughs> yeah, every time I watch that movie though, I catch something a little bit like more and new yeah. that I didn't the first time. And uh, there was a lot of little things I caught this time around. Maybe because I've se- I've seen it so many times now, but to see it in IMAX and just like it was just awesome. Just yeah, to, like just sit back and just yeah. For me, it was the sound. As much as the as much as the image, like the sound design in that movie is is very different. And there's like this low rumble sound that happens. It's just really it's unsettling. pulsating, kind of very eerie, very mm-hmm. yes. yes, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I I think I see Hereditary at least at least twice a year. It's like a rewatch mm, for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. But and like you said, every every single time I notice something different. Is there anything in particular that you noticed this time that you didn't notice before? Uh, there was one thing that stood out to me at the, in the end, the end, uh, sequence of when Peter wakes up from the broken nose and yeah. Tony Collette's already kind of like in her, her new form when she, when he first wakes up and he gets out of the bed and all the lights are off and he's like, mom. And like, you know, he's looking mm-hmm. for everybody. Um, there's a sound and it's when you hear something and I never caught it before, but it's the sound of the piano and the, the, the piano wire. Oh, that she clearly has now taken from the piano. Oh, what? I heard it and I was like, oh, that's definitely piano sound. Like oh, a, holy shit. Yeah. Oh, I never knew. That's awesome. You hear that it's. I'm so glad I asked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. That oh, was one thing cool that I, I, told, I told my wife as soon as we were done. I was like, I never caught that because in, in the moment I was like, oh, I was like, that's the piano wire. I knew. Exactly yeah. What it was. Yeah. That's the thing about that movie is it's built for multiple viewings, like a lot of viewings. Yeah, there's a there's lot of so stuff. many layers. layers. So many details. Yeah. I feel like that should be the standard for filmmaking. There's so many movies you watch. I'm like, yeah, that's that was fun tonight, but that's like a disposable fucking movie. Like, I'm not going to see that again, you know, but that movie, it's uh, it's it's very special. Still holds up. Still holds up. Like, I I still even like I find myself doing a lot of work and I always try to find movies or shows or things that just to put on as like background noise. I have to have Mm -hmm. something on at all times. And I almost put that on the other day and I was like, wait, we're going to see this in IMAX like. Yeah, week. don't ruin it. And I hadn't seen it in a while, which was really nice because I hadn't seen it. You know, I don't know. Yeah. May- maybe, I don't think I had it, maybe in the past year, maybe one time. Um, And I was so glad that I didn't. So when I was able to watch it like fresh. Yeah, just, just like, it, it was fresh. so good. Yeah. Yeah, I love how horror fans are comfort movies or people like taking their own heads off yeah. and, you know, exactly. horrific things like that. <laughs> I just need stuff that's not loud and super distracting and yeah. just whatever. It's like this, you know. And that that movie has become one of the ones that I really really enjoy to have on. Yeah, that sound design though it's it's something very different, yeah. very unsettling. Yeah. yeah, but no, I like some people are like, oh, you watch all these horror movies, doesn't it upset you? It's like no, it's 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 upsetting when you take the fun out, you know. And there's a place for like the martyrs of the world and the Henry Portrait of a Serial Killers and the Last House on the Left mm-hmm. of the world. What else did you see? Uh, uh, poor things. All right, let's talk about poor things. What'd you think? Oh, I loved it. Oh man, that's that's. So I I think I texted this to you when when, when I saw it a few weeks ago. It's my my favorite movie of the year so far. But you correct? Yeah, me, me too. It's twenty twenty three, right? Twenty twenty three, technically. So, but my favorite that I've seen this year. Yeah, for sure. And that and late night with the devil was was kind of my top so far this year because I just really really enjoyed that movie. Yeah, that movie um, was awesome. But watching poor things was just like it was such a so much fun so much fun just so different mm-hmm. the idea behind it the cinematography it's just it's a beautifully shot movie 
Um, all the acting is great. Emma Stone is fucking awesome. Oh my god, yeah. Um, I mean, she did so well. Just the the writing, the story arc, the the character development, just how you know everything she goes through, just to see her, you know, her change was really really fun to watch. And even like the what do you call them the the flashback scenes in color from going from color and black and yeah, I like really that. yeah, like that a lot. Yeah, it had so much. It that was just like. There's, there's not many of these, but that was just like an awesome night at the movies. Yeah. You know, like I was talking about Monkey Man. Yeah. Like you just get your money's worth yeah. cinematically. And it was so beautiful. It knocked me on my ass when I first saw it. The first 10 minutes, you're like, what the fuck did I get myself into? Yeah. You got like a duck walking around with a dog head yeah, or yeah. maybe it's the opposite. I don't know. But you're like, what is this? And then it slowly seduces you. And it's so good. And she's incredible. Yeah. In it. But it's like, talk about layered storytelling. There's so much in that. I've saw it twice, actually, yeah. in the theater. I'm definitely going to get the Blu-ray mm. whenever it comes out. Like, I want the commentary. Like, that was just such a masterpiece. So beautifully done. Mixes horror and just, like, real ele- elegance and just everything about it. Yeah. It was very singular, you know, and it made me feel really good about the state of cinema. The fact that that first of all got made with an enormous budget, like yeah. that was a big budgeted movie, but something that was that weird and different and singular could get made in this climate and be nominated for not just an Oscar, but best picture. Yeah. Yeah. It made me feel really good about where we are with movies because I think for the longest time, everybody's concerned that like it's all Marvel movies and not a lot of original voices, but with Yorgos Lanthimos, this was such a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask. So, is that who who directed it? Who yeah, did Yorgos it? Lanthimos. Is he has he done anything before this? So when you say like the budgets, like so 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 he has has to have some kind. Yeah, of- Yeah, he has a body work before this. Yeah, one. he did. Um, he did Killing of a Sacred Deer, which was mm. really good. That's pretty much a horror movie. Okay. So it's like very very different tonally. Um, fantastic movie. That movie's awesome. I've heard, I've heard of that one too. Yeah, it's devastating. But it's also just he's really good at world building and kind of tone building within that world. He creates these kind of alternate universes where people talk in a different way and they are all on the same sort of emotional plane. And there's just something bizarre. Do you feel transported? It. And you're like, what? Like, yeah, in the sense like, of like a good job of building the world. You yeah. actually like feel like yeah. you're. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you feel like you're part of this very strange universe that's very close to ours, but different enough to feel weird. Kind of like David Lynch or David Cronenberg, where the people kind of talk a little differently and act differently. But yeah, Killing of a Sacred Deer is great. I want to watch the rest of his filmography, like The Favorite and stuff like that. But um, he's got a new movie coming out with Emma Stone that apparently is like a much smaller scale. But this is, this is a tough one to top, although he's probably not going to try to top it. You know, that's like when you go out, when you have a huge movie like that, you don't try to top it. Like when Tarantino did Pulp Fiction, he was telling himself, like, let's not try to top this. Let's do a smaller, humbler movie. And Jackie Brown came out. Mm. Might be what Yorgos is doing. But yeah, that, all to say that that movie was sensational. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Can't get enough. Of I it. can't wait yeah. to watch it again. Yeah. yeah. What else? Uh, I saw the first Omen, which I enjoyed. Did you see it? Mm hmm. It's good. It is the exact same plot as Immaculate. <sighs> Two sides of the same coin. Like pretty much the same plot, but opposite in a way, but the same plot. But they're both good. They're both complementary. Like the fact that they both exist, you know, they don't really override each other. It's worth seeing both, but same plot. Where does it fall? Is it is it a prequel? Is it a sequel? What is it? Prequel. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a prequel, prequel to The Omen, and they even tie it back to the original movie. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it was good. It was really good. There was a lot of creepy stuff in it. It felt like a serious horror movie, kind of like The Exorcist, like the original Exorcist. There was this long, elaborate sort of backstory and really, really good production value, and a lot. they were doing a lot of mythology building. And then when you find out what's happening, you go, oh, yeah, that would actually happen. The church would do something like that. Like that. <laughs> yeah. There's moments where you just see the corruption element of it and you start to think like, oh, that actually is kind of realistic that that potentially would be something that could happen. Mm. But it's really good. A lot of creepy moments, a lot of couple of gross out moments. It really delivers for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I hadn't, I didn't even know they were coming out with that. So maybe a month or maybe two months before. Mm-hmm. And um, I had no interest in seeing it. And then uh, I started hearing some things here and there that it was actually pretty good. It's getting great reviews. Yeah. 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 For good reason. Yeah. It's good. It's really solid. Like you'll, that. you'll dig it for sure. Good. Yeah. Good to know. All right. What else have you seen? 
Uh, I watched Satanic Hispanics. How was that? It was it was okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an anthology, which I didn't realize uh, going into it. Um, I liked the first sequence. The s- second one, not so. Much. I think there was like four or five. They're all like little short films. Yeah, they were all okay. Um, one of them was too too comical for me. Hmm. But it's like you know, it's like it like they're trying to go for funny, but I don't know it it's hard for me to get sucked into an anthology when it's like, you go from like serious to like completely like, right. Like silly, you know? Yeah. Almost in a sense, but it was okay. I felt like it was a little let down. I felt like it was something, especially, well, even as a Hispanic, I was like, Oh, that sounds really cool. Like I want to support yeah. my people. Um, but it was fine. Nothing, nothing to write to my abuela about. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, it, I, it's got a lot of press. I feel like they will probably keep making them. And maybe the second, third one, you know, might they might ramp it up a little bit. Yeah, I've been meaning to see it. I like Gigi Guerrero a lot, so I wanted to see what she would do. I don't know which one she did. I'm not sure. I there there is like a there is like one main like story that gets threaded in between all the other ones, okay. uh, which is pretty cool. Um, that one I do like because they're basically talking about the entire time without spoiling anything, like mm-hmm. kind of what's going to happen at the end. Okay. Um, so that's pretty cool. But um, but yeah, but then everything kind of leading to it for me just didn't really. Yeah, right. Uh, All right. So maybe I'll skip it. Uh, I saw Abigail. You did. You have you went? I didn't, and I really, I just, I, I'll see it. I just. We well, should not going out my way to right. Now. Okay. All right. I recommend it. Well, if there's Monkey Man and Abigail in the theater, if I can make it to the theater one of these days, I'm oh, gonna do both. That is fucking best <laughs> double feature of your life. Yeah, it's it's really fun. I really enjoyed it. That's how it looked. Like ready or not kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think these guys in Radio Silence, who I'm a big fan of, I feel like with Scream, they probably had to check a bunch of boxes and they were playing in somebody else's playground. So this is more them sort of unbound and them mm-hmm. doing like what they want. And tonally, it's really similar to Ready or Not. It's sort of like explosive action and a lot of humor, yeah. but also really good storytelling at the same time. This also was one of universal's most like it did really well for universal with their new vampire movies because they're putting out i mean they're trying to reboot obviously they're trying to reboot the universal monster series but they're kind of doing they're they're taking seemingly taking a page from marvel's playbook and handing a lot of franchises and ideas over to real visionary directors like renfield being something that's within the universal monster universe right and then last voyage of the demeter this movie did better than both of those yeah it still could have done better it did like i think five million above its budget hmm. but for universal it's doing really well in in the context of their other vampire movies well it, it had it must have a big marketing budget because they were i i saw like every trailers for this like a year ago or like yeah. maybe eight months ago for for a while now mm-hmm. and uh, i remember at the time i was like okay it looks fun um and then i've just been seeing it around more and more so yeah the voyage of the last uh demeter i haven't i still haven't seen that but I remember that had some budget too, but I, I also, yeah, never, it's a big budget. I never heard anything about it either. I never really saw much about it. You know what um, it's about? Um, kind of, isn't that, that's, um, is it Nosferatu coming from? Yeah. Dracula. Yeah. 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 It's a really cool idea. It's where it's very worth saying. You should definitely say it. you saw, um, Renfield, right? Yeah. 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 Loved yeah. it. But yeah, it was out of all those movies, I think it was the best and it did the best. So I think it's, I think they should do more universal movies, you know, give them the budgets, give them the monsters like radio silence. I think they're fantastic because they know horror, they know humor, they know like how to deliver a really fun night at the movies. Yeah. You know, their showmanship is awesome and it'll get, it's the kind of movie that's worth seeing in the theater with people. And, uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, I watched In the Mouth of Madness. All right. It's a movie that I've heard of for a while. I just never, never seen it and finally put it on and I, I enjoyed it. You've seen it? Yep. Saw it a while ago. I don't remember that much about it. I feel like I want to rewatch it, but uh, I remember Sam Neill being a badass. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. It just felt like uh, I, I enjoyed it for what it was, what it was. And I don't have a frame of reference to, to point out, but I feel like the story coming to life in real life has been done like so many times 
Mm-hmm. And I don't know where this falls of like, you know, were they the first ones to do it? Probably not, I'm assuming. But I just feel like that has just been over. So when I watched it, it was kind of disappointed. As I saw it kind of happening, I was like, it oh, it's one of those. It was just, you know, it was fine. It felt like a Stephen King kind of mm. movie. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it. Nice. Yeah, I want to see it again. Uh, Guillermo del Toro keeps trying to remake it. Really? He's been trying to remake it for like 10 years. He almost, it almost went into production, but then it didn't. But that is a passion project of his that I'd really like to see what he would do with. Well, I'd be curious to see then what he does with, because I, I did like how they would show all the weird things that are happening and you see someone's perspective of like, you know, you know, really, you know, they start changing faces and things like yeah. that. I'd be curious to see what he does with those, those, those moments. Yeah. I think he's not going to remake the movie. I think he will remake or he will make it based on the original H.P. Lovecraft story. Oh, I didn't know it was. He'll just go right Lovecraft. to the source. God. Oh, yeah. It's, a lo- it's Lovecraft. Got it. That's different. Yeah. I keep meaning to read Lovecraft. I have a bunch of his books, but I feel like, you know, you need you need to go away for a weekend and read it by candlelight at some ancient haunted library. You know, it feels like the way, even though he's a pretty racist piece of shit. I was going to say, I didn't want to like, cause you, you told me that a while ago yeah. and I didn't know. And I remember I looked it up and I read all this stuff and I was like, pretty holy bad. shit. Pretty bad. Um, but I still, I don't know. I love reanimator. Reanimator still is like, that's, reanimator's that's, perfect. <laughs> so when I see those hits, I'm like, damn, that's a Lovecraft. I'm like, shit, fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, Walt Disney too. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. We love yeah. Disney. Yeah. We do love Disney, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that gives me a new what do you know or did you know? Okay, that's an idea. Ah. Actually, I might do it. I'll do it this episode. Perfect. Yeah, done. Cool. Perfect. Because I wasn't pleased with the one that I had. So now I will be. What else? Um, That is, I started watching Servant. What is that? That is the M. Night Shyamalan TV show on Apple TV. Oh, okay. About four or five episodes in. It's intriguing. Hmm. Really intriguing. The first episode is like, what the fuck is happening really? here? Really? It's about this couple who recently lost their baby to SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. And they're, I didn't know this was a thing. They're walking around with a fake baby, which apparently, this is devastating, is a real actual coping mechanism that some people have mm-hmm. if they lose a child. So the idea is there is this nanny who comes to care for the child at this family's home. She arrives and the baby is one of these dummies, one of these like fake dummies. It kind of looks like a CPR dummy, but it's a lot more realistic. Yeah. It's got an eeriness to it, but it has the weight and armature of an actual baby. So she gets there and she, that's the baby that she's supposed to care for. And the father it sits her down and is like, look, my wife has really been going through a lot lately and like, just go with it. And the, and then the, the nanny's like, I don't know what you mean. And is taking care of it. It is. And the father's finally like, you can quit the charade. And then one day he wakes up and it's a real baby. And it's like, what the fuck happened? And nobody is reacting to it. So the, the, the nanny isn't reacting to the fact that it suddenly is real now. And the mom isn't reacting. They're just acting as though this is reality. So it's very M night Shyamalan. How soon does that happen? Is that the first episode? It's first episode. Oh, that's cool. It's not a spoiler. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Maybe a little bit, but not really. It's like episode one. Yeah. Oh, I didn't heard of that. So yeah. Intriguing. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. I, 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 yeah, I'm I'm excited to see where it goes, but uh, and the episodes are only like half an hour, mm. and it's four seasons in. Like this is not a new show. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I also I don't know a lot of the Apple TV stuff. Yeah, as it is, it's um, good though. Cool. Yeah. Okay. What about you? I watched Baghead. Yeah, it's on Shutter. I don't know if it's a Shutter movie or not, but it's basically this girl who, um. Either she was in a foster home or orphan or something, or I don't really know, but she doesn't talk to her dad. Her dad has passed away, left these videotapes behind, and basically has left this pub to her. This takes okay. place in, in England somewhere, I believe. Um, leaves this pub to her. She gets contacted, and she she has a friend that either she's been like kind of just like getting through life with, like a friend, you know, again, either foster home or something like that. Mm-hmm. They go together. And, um, you find out that once your name is put on the deed, you now have control over this demon, basically that's in the basement. Oh, wow. Who is Baghead. And it's essentially, okay. it's this woman who has a, a like a potato sack, like over, over her head. And there's a wall, there's a brick wall, which she comes out of, 
And when you give her an item, she, I think she eats it. So it can be anything. So if you give her an item of someone who's passed away, it has to be the bag comes off of her head and she now has the form of that person. And you have two minutes to talk to this person. Whoa, that's cool. It's actually a really cool premise. Um, the movie's cool. I, I actually I enjoyed it for what it was. The ending felt a little like easy, but mm. um, but the idea was pretty cool. It was something I never I never heard of, um, or had seen done before. Which I you know I like that idea. Yeah, there's so much to innovate with in demon movies. Mm -hmm. There's so many cool yeah. directions you can go. Yeah. There's so much mythology, and I don't remember if they go into even how she, uh, how she comes about or how it works really. Um, but essentially, there's some kind of deal there, and there's a pact, and um, whoever is on that deed, she has to listen to. But once you pass two minutes, like she gets stronger and stronger, and you gotta like cut it off. Yeah. Oh, it's to, like talk to me. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then yeah, things start happening. She becomes more powerful. She starts being more manipulative, mean, manipulative to you, and yeah. all these things. Yeah. Oh wow, well, I gotta check that one out. And that's on Shutter. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. It's a fun, easy watch. Yeah. No, that's all. Uh, that's that is all I got. Yeah, so it was a it, it was a small it was a low it was a slow week for horror. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. So from what I understand, you have an unpopular horror opinion. Oh, we're going into that. Oh, yeah. Oh wait, no, we've got to go to the news. Oh fuck it, let's just do it. Unpopular opinion. Well, it kind of segues out of our um, first bullet of hereditary. My unpopular opinion, and maybe it's still popular to some people. Uh, hereditary is the best movie in the last decade. Best horror, horror movie. movie. Best I don't disagree. I, if you ask me what's the best of the past decade, I would have said Hereditary. Yeah. Easily. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. But yeah. not expecting that. 100%. Uh, that's a movie I know that people either like it or they don't. And um, phew, I mean, I, I, again, without going into the story, my first experience was just something like just completely blew me away. The way everything happened, the way things were happening in my life, like just shit just was, it just, you know, and that was on top of just being a great movie. Mm -hmm. um, it was just all these things for me that, ha that the experience was amplified like yeah. by a thousand. Um, and when we talked about watching it in IMAX, like I sat there and I wanted to try to experience it like the first time, which you'll never get, but, and I've already seen it so many times, but yeah. I was still able to enjoy it. Like really, like really like immerse myself and just sit there and just like, just take it all in. And that's why I said some of the little things that I noticed, it was really, it was really like just as enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It's shocking that that's his first film. That feels like his fifth film yeah. because it's, there's so much of an indication of like cinematic mastery. It doesn't have to be as good as it is. Yeah. And it still would have been really good. Yes. But the depth of it, all of these things firing uh, at the same time, like it fires on all cinematic cylinders without trying, seeming to try too hard. Yeah. But he just thought out so much. So the somatic element with the sound design and performances were incredible. All of these details about the plot and the mythology, like it is thorough. Yes. Very respectable piece yeah. of work. But yeah, I would say past 10 years, that would be mine too. Mm. It's funny because I was looking at our notes and it said, I accidentally saw that you wrote X is the best movie of the past 10 years. I thought you were talking about Ty West. I knew you were going to say like, that. Oh, this is going to be an argument. <laughs> as much as I love X, yeah. I, I I wouldn't say it was the best. Yeah, I did yeah. like X, though. X I liked X a lot. Yeah. I'm psyched for Maxine. Yeah, me too. Yeah. No, that's yeah. going to be- Pearl crazy. was okay. Pearl was fine. I, I liked like Pearl. A, you know. I had a minute where I wasn't sure what was better, Pearl or X, actually. Yeah. They were that close for me. But I think it's X now. Yeah. 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 But I loved Pearl. Yeah. It's funny because when I wrote that, I was like, he, if he sees us, he's going to think that I'm talking about. I'm That's nice. totally what I thought. Yeah. And I left. It's a nice psych out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I would say the only other movie I would question like, oh, is this one the best of the past days would be Get Out. Mm, That's yeah. fair. That's a really. I would say the two of them were probably neck and neck for me. Um, Hereditary might take the throne because it's just, I don't know. It's just a favorite. But but I think Get Out. I think Get Out and Hereditary, two best I had a, 10 years. I had a rewatch of Get Out two weeks ago, and I'm like, damn, this is such a good movie. So it's perfect. It's so good. I the, It gets better with every watch. That's another movie that is just, every time I see it, I do mm -hmm. see something more, but I also just appreciate it more. That's another movie I watch probably twice a year. Yeah. If not three times. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, better with every single watch. I showed it to my mom and she doesn't typically like horror movies. She's like, God, this is a great movie. I was like, I know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. Should we do the howl? Let's do it. <laughs> 
Let's do the howl. All right. Yeah, yeah this was a big, big month for, for horror news. I usually do 13 quick hits, and now I'm just calling it quick hits because <laughs> there's more than 13. Yeah. 28 years later, sequel enlists Ralph Fiennes, Jody Comer, and Aaron Taylor Johnson. So, yeah, Danny Boyle and Alex Garland are reuniting to extend the iconic zombie saga. And they're actually plotting out a trilogy now. And apparently Nia DaCosta of Candyman, the director of Candyman, Jordan Beale's produced Candyman, is potentially in talks to be a, to one of the directors. So this should be interesting. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I, I loved Candyman. And the fact that Danny Boyle and Alex Garland are doing it again, like I'll take that. They they didn't do 28 weeks, right? I don't think so. Because I, I, I actually really liked 28 weeks. Maybe I need to see it again. I remember being really disappointed mm -hmm. by 28 weeks, but maybe I need to check it out again. It was a... It was an easy movie. Um, the bar, I think, was set so high from 28 Days, personally. Yeah. I remember I was a little little let down, too. But I still I watch it now, and I still really enjoy it. Um, 28 Weeks, though, has easily in my top five favorite opening oh, really? sequences of, of, of all time. Wow. Not even just horror. That whole, that's, do you remember the scene? No. Oh, that's what you got to go back and watch. Okay. With all the right. dad, that so basically all the all the all the infected come and they raid the house and the dad leaves the his son and his wife behind. He jumps out the window. He ends up on the boat and he just pieces out. Like it's just so fucked up. Oh man, yeah. It reminds me of one of my favorite opening sequences is from the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead remake, mm -hmm. and it's like oh, a the, Johnny Cash song yeah, playing yes. as the world just slowly starts ending. That's a and great it's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something about like a good needle drop in a horror movie, like in the opening sequence of The Devil's Rejects, and they play, oh man, whose song is this? Hold on. At the end, they play Freebird. They play Freebird. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know the song. I don't know what it's called. Oh, Midnight that's, Rider. That's when they're walking and they're 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 leaving the house, right? And yeah. It's that whole like montage of them like going through the water and shit, and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. To Midnight Rider, and it's just it's so good because I kind of. Tonally, it normalizes a really horrific situation when you put rock music behind it or yeah. And that is scarier. And just there's something really, really cool about that. Yeah. What else we got here? Um, Zach Krager, the director of Barbarian, has a new movie coming out called Weapons. This is set for a global release by Warner Brothers. The film promises a complex narrative akin to Magnolia. And he is teaming up with Josh Brolin, which should be interesting. And uh, I was a big fan of Magnolia. The idea of like a complex human drama that's horror from Zach Kreger, I am all in. That sounds fantastic. Can you give me a quick like what's what's Magnolia about? Like just top it's line. It's kind of about the intersection of I think like four or five people's lives. It's one of those sort of convergence movies that they were doing a lot of in the 90s, kind of like Amores Peros or um, what was um what was that other movie? Uh, Babel. It's kind of like those movies where it's like four or five disparate lives and how they intersect. Mm -hmm. It's one of those. I do like those though. Yeah. yeah. But this one's just all these people, they're very deeply troubled human psyches and all their little individual stories around it. It's really good. It's all about like the drama of the human existence, but it's, it's like, uh, it's quintessential prime PT Anderson right after Boogie Nights. This was his fall. Oh, okay. It's really good. Cool. Really, really good. Yeah. This is out of left field. Post Malone is creating a new horror universe with Platinum Dunes and Vault Comics. He's got a comic book coming out and Platinum Dunes is doing the movie on it. So apparently the story is about a demonic medieval Europe saved by a celestial 18 wheeler. So this sounds like Maximum Overdrive meets Army of Darkness. And uh, I'm in. Yeah. He's I, a horror fan. I don't know how I feel. I, it, it's got to be really good. I feel like if they're going to give him all this money to make a graphic novel and turn it into a movie. Yeah. Like we haven't even seen the graphic novel yet. Right. Right. So I'm, I'm skeptic, but yeah, you, know. you think they would do the graphic novel first, see how that does and then decide to make the movie. Yeah. But I don't know. It's, it's kind of cool that they're doing it all at the same time. Yeah. Platinum dunes. They take a lot of swings. They don't miss a lot as far as I'm concerned, mm. as far as horror anyway. 
I think a lot of what they do is uh, is very solid. Well, I wonder if you think about like the the storyboarding aspect, like how much of this, like as they're actually making the graphic novel, like mm-hmm. are they going to be able to kind of do it in parallel? Like, is that the plan, yeah. or is or is it really like let's see how it does, and you know, yeah. we're, we're going to adapt. Basically, that's ah, an interesting strategy. Yeah. I'm not sure. Curious. Yeah. Why you hate Kinemura's got a new movie, The Thrill Ride, which traps victims on a deadly roller coaster. I feel like we haven't seen that since uh, Final Destination. Yeah, that's cool. Deadly roller coaster, so that should be cool. Yeah. He's a great director. You never saw Midnight Me Train, did you? No. I would say after Hellraiser and Candyman, it's probably the best Barker movie. Hmm. Yeah. It's definitely on my list. It's one of those ones that I keep hearing of, and I remember hearing about it a long time ago, and I just kind of dismissed it because of the, the title. Um, yeah, just sounds like like a porno. You know? <laughs> a midnight me train, baby. You know what I'm saying? That's what they call me downtown. <laughs> Actually, yeah. So uh, that's great. Moving on, uh, Zoe Bell is directing Free Fall, and this is going to be her directorial debut. Zoe Bell, who was a stunt double for Uma Thurman in Kill Bill, and a big pal of Tarantino's, she was in Death Proof as an actress. She's acted in a few Tarantino movies, so this will be interesting to see what she does as a director. I mean, since she's she's been on sets for decades, and being a stunt coordinator, I mean, I'm sure this is going to be pretty rocking movie. So yeah, I'm definitely psyched about that. And they're filming in New Zealand, which so it'll be beautiful. Hell yeah, yeah, that should be cool. You saw Fall, right? I did. Fall was insane. Yeah, edge of my seat. Yeah. You want fucking anxiety? Oh my God. Watch that shit. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And I was just thinking, like, there's the movie The Descent, The Descent. This is The (laughs) Ascent, basically. (laughs) That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Madman Takashi Miike has got a new movie, The Lumberjack the Monster, which coming to Netflix, it's about a brutal face off between a lawyer and a monstrous assailant. And uh, yeah, another venture into horror for Takashi Miike who did Audition, which I'm a huge fan of, and Ichi the Killer, which is very worth watching, but also very brutal, very sadistic, so just kind of be ready. It's it's a tough one. So don't watch that with the family. Don't watch it with the family. No, don't watch any Takashi Miike movie so, with the family. So not Gateway Horror. I shouldn't show my nieces and nephews. It's not Gateway Horror. Too. No, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> I still need to watch Ich Ichi the Killer and Audition. I would say start with Audition. Yeah. 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 Um, Ichi's good. It's like very, it's extremely brutal. It's extremely sadistic, but it's very sensationalized sort of Japan, J- Tokyo cinema, mm-hmm. kind of like Kill Bill, just really exaggerated, but it's very brutal. Like it's, it's a rough movie and it's relentlessly rough. And for like two and a half hours. Yeah. Like Henry, not quite, not the same tone. It's a little more over the top. But it's just like one after another, after another, after another sadistic thing happening mm-hmm. and people like torturing each other. And like, it's got sadomasochism in it. It's fucking nuts. Okay. It's so, it's so unhinged. Yeah. But it's great. One of those movies that you have to find the right time to like watch it. Yeah. yeah it's usually when you're by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> only when you're by yourself <laughs> only when you're by yourself alcohol it should be involved probably but uh yeah under no circumstances should you watch this movie with another human being <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right done uh alexander aja has a new movie with halle berry so th- i think this is her first horror movie since gothica i think i, think I could so. be wrong about that yeah yeah should be interesting to see what he does. Uh, I've always been a huge fan. Crawl, I thought it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Obviously, High Tension is such a classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I just, for me, it's the Holly Berry thing. It's just, it's Holly Berry. It's hard to, mm-hmm. it's hard to immerse yourself into a movie like that with such an iconic like actress. Um, yeah. So especially when you're talking an evil spirit, it's like it's another, another you know ghost story essentially, right? Um, it's hard to, it's hard to empathize with a character like that to like look past the fact that it's Holly Berry, that it's Holly Berry. unless she's that good in this role. And I'm, that's I'm not saying that she couldn't do that, but I just feel like it's going to be, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure it'll, you know, be fine, but yeah. Well, a job being behind it. I don't know. I have high hopes. That's what I was going to say too, is, I mean, like Hills have eyes remake, maniac remake, 
yeah. Horns, P2, like all all really, really solid movies. Yeah, he was of the original Splat Pack, so he's definitely got What's a that? lot of- who's, who's the Splat Pack? No, Splat Pack was a group of filmmakers in the early 2000s, including Rob Zombie, Alexander Aja, Eli Roth. There's a few more that I'm missing, so forgive me, um, that basically were bringing- Oh, and James Wan of okay. Saw. Yeah, who were basically bringing gore back into horror where it belongs. Yeah. They basically are being called the purveyors of torture porn. Okay. But they didn't all do torture porn, but in any case. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the splat pack. Sam Raimi has a Netflix thriller, Don't Move, coming out, which is a horror movie involving a deadly game of survival against a paralysis inducing killer crafted by the minds behind 50 states of fright that'll be interesting paralysis inducing killer that sounds terrifying did you see 50 states states of fright no i didn't see any of them i didn't have um quibi is that what it was yeah was it was that on quibi sure yeah i don't know how to see them now i haven't like really tried i would but i just kind of forgot i have a couple of friends who did the some of them but i didn't get a chance actually you know i saw a couple of them i did see a few was quibi that was supposed to be the long form the short amazon it was kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. David Katzenberg was behind it. It was basically like an Instagram for movies or movies yeah, it was for, supposed to be like short yeah, form exactly. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever. So whatever happened with that? Because I remember I thought it was going to be, I think it just bombed. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, ha- everyone was like Sam Raimi was doing movies, Spitz Spielberg doing some movies, but I, I don't know if nobody wanted it. I don't know. I haven't really postmortem I, that. I think it's just, it's just being attached to your device for 10, 20 minutes have to watch them. That's, yeah. That's a lot. It's the kind of thing that theoretically might make sense. Like, oh, everybody's on their phone now. Everybody wants short form content. But when we go to the movies, I think even young people, uh, they want to see movies on the big screen. I could be wrong, though, because mm-hmm. I, I will hear about young people watching like The Godfather on their iPhone. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you cannot do that. It's sacrilegious. Well, it's like I think about like New York City. We have commutes and things like that. It's mm-hmm. easy to to sit on the train or to watch on like the bus or something like yeah. that. But um if if we're talking shorts that are 10 20 minutes like you still have to be locked in for that time right you know, and it's really hard to for me at least i guess so to pick up and resume where you were before before that and just kind of like get back into it it's, it's yeah it's not the same so yeah i gotta look into it i don't know where 50 50 states of fright are i think he did like the idea was 50 short films each of which takes place in a different state i don't know how many they did but i want to look into it Zoe Kravitz is directing a movie, Blink Twice, which there's actually a trailer out for this. Slated for an August release, this thriller features a tech billionaire's island getaway that turns sinister, forcing guests to unravel a chilling reality to survive. That'll be interesting. I like Zoe Kravitz. I think she's one of the coolest people alive. Pretty cool. Right now. She's cool as fuck. She's going to do a hell of a horror movie. Channing Tatum is in this. I believe that's how they met. Really? Yeah. Because they're dating now, right? I don't know. Let's not turn this into fucking TMZ. I don't follow that (laughs) shit, man. (laughs) Me neither. (laughs) Me neither. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it should be cool. I'm pretty sure she's in it also. Yeah. She's cool. Yeah. Radio Silence is hinting at a Ready or Not sequel. And uh, I'm very psyched. I loved Ready or Not. Loved Ready. I showed my whole family Ready or Not. And even my my dad, who was not a horror fan, was like, this is a great movie. So yeah, it's so good. Because it's, even though there's a lot of like it's gore, it's that over the top special effects stuff where it's not like yeah. you know you're 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 not kind of like cringing like oh my god like that's too much it's mm-hmm. it's just fun it's explosive yeah. it's, it's brutal though I forgot I saw it, I've seen it like three times now yeah. the third time I was like I forgot how brutal yeah, this is yeah. yeah like her nails getting all fucked up and her having to go through like just yeah. tearing herself apart poor yeah. Samara weaving I forgot I read somewhere they went through like. 30 dresses 10 dresses something like oh, that wow, like really? a lot because they they constantly had it like the progression throughout the movie like she she starts off really obviously really clean mm-hmm. and they have so many different that she had to change into yeah because she's in a wedding dress the whole the, movie yeah 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 they did uh, radio silence did a movie called devil's do a while ago which like it, it was ahead of its time it would have done great now because it's like the same idea of immaculate in the first omen <laughs> and um a movie did not do well but i saw it not that long ago it's very solid yeah really worth called? watching devil's do devil's do devil's do okay. yeah yeah and they had a really cool marketing stunt where they had a like demonic baby in a baby carriage that would push itself in new york city and then people would go and check it out like what the hell's going on and there would be this demonic animatronic baby that would pop out I remember that. and it would start vomiting yeah i remember yeah. that yeah I didn't know it was that. for that movie <laughs> 
Maybe at the time. It was Radio Silence. Hmm. Yeah. There's a prequel to Rosemary's Baby coming out called Apartment 7A, and it's going to be on Paramount Plus, directed by Natalie Erica James, who did Relic, which was an awesome movie from a couple years ago. Fairly small. Uh, I think it was an IFC Midnight movie. Really, really good. Beautifully done. I had her on the show at one point. The The name sounds familiar. I can't remember what it is. Does that start off where they're going through like a cave? Are there caves or something like that? There's a movie called The Relic from the uh, 90s. Mm. This one is just called Relic. This is about a family whose matriarchal grandma is like slowly dying and it's about death. And then all this sort of supernatural stuff starts happening in, in the house. Mm. Yeah. Really good movie. Essentially about grief. Really well done. I'm thinking of a different movie then. I'm thinking of the Baby. one. Um, you think thinking of one in like museums? No, it's more recent. It's like on the farm. Um, it's not that one. The Dark Netflix. and the Wicked? Yes. That okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a great I one. I like that too. movie a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There are two new Evil Dead films in development. Sam Raimi selected Sebastian Vanacek, who did Infested, and Francis Galuppi, who just did The Last Stop in Yuma, both of which are helming new entries in the horror franchise. Yeah, man, the more the merrier. Keep them coming. Just keep the quality up. With, I, I mean, these both these guys seem like they know what they're doing, so this should be interesting. I'm assuming you haven't, but uh, Infested, you haven't seen? I haven't yet? seen it yet. Yeah, I keep seeing it on Shutter, and it's one of those movies I want to see. It, it's been popping up on my feed, so that's I'm like, all right, I yeah. got to watch that shit. So, and if he's going to be doing the new Evil Dead, I really want to really want to give it. Yeah. A well, what I love is that Sam Raimi and the Ghost House team are finding these directors who have only done one movie for the most part. Fidi Alvarez had not done a single feature when they handed him Evil Dead, and like, look what he was able to do, but. They so easily could hand it over to Fidi Alvarez to do again, but I feel like they're very intentionally launching careers of new directors, which is so awesome. And and I wonder if that's part of their, you know, if if Sam Raimi wants to not say like have his hand in the pot, but if you're bringing in these new directors, like how much are they guiding them? Are they not not in a bad way, but like yeah, you have these green people of like this is kind of our shit. We're giving mm-hmm. you the keys to the car, like yeah, here's how you drive. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to be there for yeah. basically to be to be mentors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's their universe that they built, so they're definitely going to be watching them, watching over it. But uh, it's just cool. I just, I, it's just a very positive thing to do that because they easily could have settled on established directors or whatever, but bringing in these new guys who are really look really promising. Mm-hmm. It's just, I just love that. Well, and I feel like they're, they're hungry too, right? Yeah. Like they're going to want to go all in. And like, I love the Fidi Alvarez one, but like, if you give them a second and third one, like how complacent do you get at that point too? So, you know, bring in these fresh people, keep, it fresh. Just like keep them fucking pumped and excited. And like, they're going to take it to that, that level. Yeah. Level, level, level. Yeah. And if you're a fairly new filmmaker, you got something to prove, man. You gotta <laughs> <That's right. laughs> keep that fire going. But yeah, no, I was very psyched about that. Plot details have been revealed about smile Two follows a cursed pop star. So that should be interesting. So a pop star, when you think about that, they're at concerts, they might be on TV. So if they do the smile in front of thousands of people, does that shit just spread like COVID? Like what's going to happen there? That should be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So smile was great. Yeah. I love smile. New sleepy hollow adaptation is coming out from paramount, which should be cool. I love the Tim Burton one, but I mean, I feel like you can't, you can't do too many of these. Terrifier 3 release date has been confirmed. Art the Clown is going to continue his reign of terror in the third entry on October 11th, 2024. That is not that far away. They just pushed the the release date up two weeks. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, we didn't realize that. Yeah, that's what came out this week was, uh, it's it's ahead of schedule. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. That's you sweet. know it's going to be a Christmas movie, right? Did we talk I about know this? that. Yeah. yeah. I think we did. I think Hell we did. Yeah. yeah. So excited for that. I'm psyched. Al Pacino is going to be in a new demon movie called The Ritual. And uh, yeah, this intense exorcism drama based on a true story features two conflicted priests tasked with a perilous mission to save a possessed woman set for 2025 release. How do we feel about all the exorcism? Like we're still going. We're still hot, man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the religious horror is huge and it seemingly is inexhaustible. There's just, you just can keep doing exorcism movies and demonic baby movies and demon movies. Like there's just, it's endless, but I don't tire of them at all. Did you see, um, 
the the Pope's Exorcist. I did. Did you see that there's a sequel that they're that they're going to be doing? Is that a sequel? There's one movie called The Exorcism. The Exorcism. So there's a there's two with separate, Russell Crowe. Yeah, he's a, he's he's playing another priest to be an exorcist, but there right. there is a confirmed sequel of The Pope's Exorcist as right. well. Right. So he's got three movies on deck. Well, got a lot of demonic shit going down, man. So it's like, dude, you're playing another priest and another exorcist. It's bizarre, of kind of a bizarre choice, but hey, I'm in. I mean, he must be having a blast. Or they're Must just, be, you yeah. know, I, I enjoyed the Pope's extras. I thought it was fun. I it's enjoyed just, it too. You know, for what it, for what it yeah. was. No, bring on the sequels. Yeah. I mean, especially the way it ended was like, I don't know if you remember, but they're basically like they're, they set it up perfectly to like, all right, we're going to go do this again, you know? <laughs> but yeah. But also, I'm sorry, really quickly. The ritual. We already have a, the ritual. I think there's a few rituals. I'm sure. Things. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have to say. Let's see. Yeah, I know a lot of it's. I don't think you can copyright a a, a movie title. It's not about copyright. It's being a little but original. It's like, yeah, that was fairly recent. The ritual came out, which I love that movie. Love yeah, that movie was awesome. So so good. So so good. Did you ever see the Seventh Day? Mm-mm. What's that? Really underrated. I feel like not a lot of people saw this. It was basically called Training Day meets The Exorcist. It's about two priests, a young priest and an older priest. The older priest is teaching the younger priest how to be an exorcist. And he basically does like a ride along with him. And he just goes to all these different demonic possession cases. It's a cool, fun movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pierce Brosnan is in it. Came out a few years ago. I, I feel like I just don't hear enough people talking about it. It was very subtle. Is it is it meant to be like fun or is it some, like a little bit of both? It's serious. It takes itself seriously for sure, but it's fun. It's got some fun elements, but it's not humorous. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Old Boy is going to be adapted into a TV series by Park Chan Wook with under Lionsgate, so that should be interesting. Apparently, it's going to aim to retain the raw power and stylistic essence of the twenty, the two thousand three film. Do you ever see Old Boy? Oh man, it's insane. So it There's a sequel. Oh yeah, you should see it. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a long time. I have, I think I've seen it since like 2003 actually. <laughs> this is making me realize I have to see it. They re- did a remake with Josh Brolin. I didn't see that. I think Spike Lee directed that. Really? Yeah. I somehow missed that. I'd be curious to see that. There's a sequence in the movie where he eats a live octopus and the shit is all real. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Five Nights at Freddy 2 is set for a 2025 Halloween release following Blumhouse's record-breaking success of the first film. They are fast-tracking a sequel. And A24 sets bring her back as the next horror movie for the directors of Talk to Me, Michael and Danny Philippou. And um, Sally Hawkins of The Shape of Water is starring. Should be interesting. Damn. Those two guys, they're like, have, I've heard some, you didn't interview them, right? No, I'd love to interview them. I've heard two different interviews with them and they are like a ball of energy. They have am, so much, man. Yeah. They are like, uh, I'm excited for them. I, I really enjoyed Talk to Me. That was, Talk to Me was great. That was my favorite movie of whatever year that came out. That, that, yeah, yeah two years that ago. would be 2023. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was Talk to Me and Evil Dead Rise. They were like mm-hmm. neck and neck. Same. But Talk to Me was like one of the most original yes. new pieces of horror. I loved it. Yeah. And the, the way they did the mythology, like everything about it was so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm psyched for Talk to Me too. Blumhouse and Lionsgate are rebooting the Blair Witch Project. I and did see that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a little bit of a controversy with the original team is basically saying after all of these years, we've not, we've been under recognized. And there's actually a number of statements that come out where they're requesting some residuals as well as meaningful consultation. Some of the actors who were involved in the original movie, which when you think about it, when you see the original movie, if those actors weren't good actors. That movie would not have worked mm-hmm. at all. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I did see headlines, but I didn't read into it. So like, what exactly, like, what are they saying? What are they? They're basically saying that we, that they have just been completely underrecognized for their contribution to the success of the Blair Witch franchise, which other than the first movie, every other Blair Witch outing has not really worked or been that successful. Like Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows is kind of a dud. And the remake a couple of years ago, I don't even remember it. I saw it in Cinema 4DX back when they were doing that, <laughs> but I don't remember I it. I saw at one all. of the more recent ones, and I didn't mind it. I thought it was okay. Um, there was one. I think they have a they have a drone in it, if I remember correctly. Oh, really? Um, yeah, but you know, it's the same thing. Like everything starts going crazy. They're going in circles. They end yeah. up in, um, you know, in the same places. And um, I remember. I I just don't remember which one it was, but I remember. And this is probably within the past year that I um, 
I watched two of the, the newer ones and they were, they were fine. Oh, so you saw Book of Shadows? I think so. That's not found footage though. It's all scripted. It's like a bunch of kids in the woods fucking around. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember now. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. I mean, even J- Jason Blum said uh, without Blair Witch, that probably would never have been any paranormal activity. So it feels kind of right in his hands. So, you know, hopefully this all works out. Sure. Yeah. Cool. And that is the howl. All right. Shall Ooh, we play blood and banter? Spooky conversation card game. That is yes. exactly right. Yeah. yeah. You want to go first? Go for it. Name a Disney villain who deserves their own horror movie. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, well, they did a Maleficent one. Um, there's a dude in the Frog Princess who's like uh, Keith David voices him. Start there. Yeah, and he's like this kind of supernatural conjurer guy. Uh, and he there's this voodoo sequence where all of this cool. He's like doing spells and stuff and all of this just insane kind of Tim Burton-esque series of ghosts go all around him in this crazy, trippy, hallucinogenic sequence. It's awesome. I'll try and pull it up when we do Clips of the mm-hmm. Week. Or maybe that'll be my Clip of the Week next week. But it's so cool. He's like a really cool character and he's eerie. And I never saw them. New Orleans. That's a great movie, mm-hmm. by the way. It's good. I didn't know Keith Davis. It's really it? good. Yeah. yeah. And there's ghosts and stuff, but uh, yeah, that dude deserves his own horror movie. Damn. I forgot his name. It's deep. I mean, I was yeah. going to go with a really you, basic answer. Of what like would Jafar. be yours? It's fucking love Jafar. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he get his own oh, movie? Yeah, was the Return was. of Jafar? Is that his own movie then? I guess. I mean, oh. if your name's in the title. Yeah. They're doing a Mufasa I remember seeing that. origin story. And then, yeah, Scar is going to have a... But his name isn't Scar because it's another Scar. His name's like <laughs> Kevin. Before he gets the Scar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's like and a much like, nicer Fuck guy. Kevin, man. I'm just, yeah. Call me Scar from now on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you rather spend the night in a cemetery or an abandoned house? Um, I like the cemetery. You can either pitch a tent. You know, an abandoned house is a little scarier. I feel like yep. you don't know what's in there, who's going to be coming in and out. And, yeah. Uh, pubescent yeah. teens coming in, graffitiing, or some homeless dudes. Can't be good. At least in the cemetery, you're, you know, you only have to deal with the dead. Yeah. And there's no <laughs> asbestos you have to worry about. Yeah. yeah. No, I think cemeteries are peaceful and pretty safe. And yeah, probably quiet, like peaceful. It. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just be respectful. Yeah. 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 I would go with cemetery too. Same reason. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Are we ready for post of the month? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Okay. So this is an Instagrammer who I recently discovered and I saw this piece of work and I was like, this is Whoa. stunning. This is insane. Incredible. Like her use of colors. Wow. Oh, I missed the first part that it's barrel. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell it's him. Just cool I mean, idea. Of, the colors are, that's the first thing that is just pops. Just insane. Yeah. And she did this on herself. Yeah. And she's got, if you look at her overall, yeah, it's just a treasure trove of insane, awesome stuff. Her sense of color and her just abilities as a makeup artist are really insane. But like her colors are stunning. Like, look at that. Yeah. 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 Super duper talented. Let me give her name for those listening at sparkly Winona sparkly W I N O N a on Instagram, Lauren Winona Moocher, probably not saying that right. And I apologize. Um, but yeah, they she did a couple other nightmare before Christmas characters too, but like this work is so stunning, like the shading and, and, and her putting it on herself. Like it's one thing to do that on a canvas, mm. which is incredible, but for her to do that on her own face I see and do body, stuff, like, but not, wow. not like to this level. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Their shock is a rock star from nightmare before Christmas, but, uh, yeah, like super talent, super duper talent. I think this is the shows her doing it, or it shows the. Oh no, maybe that just shows the, yeah. the final result. But my God, yeah, yours. God, all right. Let me get yours. Cool that, but <laughs> mine's just a photo. I've this seen other this. podcast um, from Camp Nightmare. I posted this. Um, 
it's back in March. I, I remember I saved it and um, I thought this was so cool and I ended up looking it up and this is from a um, 1995 three issue comic book series. So it's a real thing. Yeah. From Oh, Tops. so this actually came out. Um, I kind of read about what each one was about and there, it seems like pretty straightforward, like fun, but uh, I mean, the artwork is just so cool and I, and like, it's so nuts. I wanted to look to see if I can find some, some to buy myself, but um, I didn't get a chance to look around, but I'm sure they're expensive just because like, yeah, it's just really badass. but I've seen this, this artist is before. Jeff Butler. Um, and it's written okay, by Nancy yes. Collins and David yeah. uh, Imhoff. Imhoff, published by Tops. Uh, is it available? Can you get probably of someone it? reselling? They're probably worth a lot, if I were to guess. Um, I didn't really get a chance to like dig around to see if I can find one, but I, I would love to have like all three in my collection, like graded and fucking just put up. Like, I mean, it just yeah, it's, it's really cool. But yeah, apparently, just art. Um, Jason, I guess they 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 they're cleaning up the lake and somehow he ends up getting like pulled out and, and transported to, to Texas. Uh, you know, they find these clever ways to, to <laughs> merge these stories, but, um, but yeah, yeah. it seems pretty cool. That's, it's not much, but it's like, the art is so badass. That's super. It does all of the art in the comic yeah. book look like this, or is this just the covers? Oh man, we gotta look into this for next time. That's super duper cool. Yeah. Oh man. That's awesome. I wonder what they're they fighting about. You think it they would seem like up? from what I was reading about, like there are parts where they seem like they're becoming friends, but then something happens that um, basically like they kind of turn on each other. Uh, but to my understanding, the hitchhikers in it, um, the, the oh, wow. dads in it, grandpa's in it. Like there's a meal, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole thing. Oh, yeah. sweet. Cool. For yeah. Sure. We got to look into that for yeah. the next episode. And that brings us to our last section. Did you know? Um, Would you like yes. to go first? I have to find it so I can read it. Here it is. So not necessarily horror, um, but film related, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I came across yeah. this the other day and I went and looked into it a little bit further. But did you know Martin Scorsese's Film Foundation has estimated that more than 90% of American films produced before 1929 are lost? The Library of Congress estimates that 75% of all silent films are lost forever. The largest cause being intentional destruction. Whoa. Intentional yeah. destruction. Why? Did they just think these films were unholy or something? Outdated. I don't know if anyone cared or just, I don't know. I don't know enough about it, but the stats are oh, like, that's terrifying. Like we'll, we'll never see a lot of those. Uh, we'll yeah, that's all those ever again. Yeah. Now that's really I'm sad. Sure. I'm sure there's some gems in there. I'm sure there's some good horror movies back there. Yeah. Well, he has that well, foundation. That, that's how I found out. Cool. Yeah. There's a, there's a local art house by where I live and I had gotten a thing in the mail and they're always trying to get like members and stuff to sign up and they're doing a whole, like a, yeah. I guess kind of a festival and it seems like proceeds are going to helping to restore film and things like that. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Oh, no, he's shit. such a badass. He's yeah. Yeah. He's the goat. Yeah. I would say as yeah. far as directors. He's one of those people you can watch. I would say he's the goat. Scorsese. That's, you can just feel it. You can see it. He's not. Yeah. He's he, not a goat. He is the goat. Yeah. Did you know the original actor who was supposed to be the Terminator was. Really? Jason. I did not know that. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> he didn't know that. Yeah. That was the original idea. The original choice. And uh, yeah, that would have been something. Because mm -hmm. the original Terminator yeah. is a horror movie. It's a slasher. It's a techno slasher. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's a cool fact. That would have been pretty nuts. Yeah. yeah. And he's yeah. dead. Yeah. He's dead now. Yeah, yeah he cares. is dead. He is dead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> did you see the OJ special that Ryan Murphy did a few years with, ago? With, with the Cuba Gooding Jr.? Yeah. Oh, it's it's excellent. With Cuba Gooding Jr. Really? as OJ. I never really it's heard much so about good. it. I remember... Um, commuting in through the city. I remember there were posters everywhere, but I've never once heard anyone talk about it. See so, yeah. It's really? actually, I think it's one of the best things Ryan Murphy's done. Yeah. It's that good. It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. prime yeah. top form Ryan Murphy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. If you've been listening to uh, the howl this long, we appreciate you and uh, yeah, we'll See be ya. back next month. All right.